regulator. Canada's banking regulator is tightening up the requirements for some types of real estate loans in this country. The changes are in effort to protect homeowners who may be at greater risk from higher interest rates and to reduce risk for lenders. For more, we are joined now by Peter Rutledge, who is head of the Office of the Superintendent of Financial Institutions in Canada. Uh, Peter, thanks so much for joining us. Thanks, Jacqueline. Great to be here. So I wonder if, you know, first of all, these changes today, um, when you read through the release, it's a bit technical. I wonder if you can just maybe tell me a bit about your intention behind it. Who, who are you uh, uh, trying to help with this, uh, with these changes? So th thanks, Jacqueline. The, the intent of the advisory, or we, the audience for the uh, advisory, first and foremost, is, is lenders. Uh, banks and other financial institutions that make residential mortgage loans to Canadians. Uh, what we tried to do is introduce a, a, a little bit more margin of safety uh, for certain lending products, combined loan products or, com or, or mortgages, pardon me, mortgages that have both a, a, a HELOC and a regular mortgage component. We want to add more margin of safety there. And the idea is we, we, we add that margin of safety or we lean into the wind in a way that doesn't disrupt housing credit uh, or the housing market more broadly, but adds a bit more margin of safety. Uh, in other words, if we put in reasonable expectations uh, on the institutions we supervise, just enough to ensure sound risk management, but not so far as to overly constrict access to credit, then we've done our job, which is to contribute to public confidence in the Canadian financial system. Okay, and so the changes that you've made, so um, uh, borrowers who owe more than 65% of the loan value, and like you said, it, it, it is not just a, a regular mortgage, it would be a combined loan, so mortgages with a line of credit or reverse mortgages or shared equity lines of credit. Um, if they owe more than 65% of the loan value, a portion of their payment has to go to paying down that principal until it gets below uh, that 65% threshold. How, how, I hope, I hope I got it right, but, but how big, um, you know, of a uh, group of borrowers who, you know, you, who are holding, you know, more than that 65% threshold right now, how big is that group? So Canada's mortgage market is uh, about $1.8 trillion. Uh, the, the, more, the uninsured mortgages, that have loan to values north of 65% and have a HELOC feature or a home equity line of credit feature attached to it is about 200 million. So it's a little north of 10%. 200 million. Yeah, 200 billion, pardon me. Billion, of billion, okay. Trillion, which is a little north of 10% of the total mortgage market. Okay, 10%. Okay, I mean, that, that's, that's fairly significant. Um, you know, why, why are you doing this now? Uh, well, we've been telegraphing it for quite a while. Um, what we noticed is the mortgage market had developed and, and lenders innovate to try and meet the needs of their clients. Uh, there was a, a, a practice whereby a, a client could um, uh, say if, if they were at a loan to value ratio of 70% uh, uh, advance or, or with the bank advance themselves uh, a HELOC, a line of credit up to 80% and leave it there and pay and make interest only payments on that component, that incremental component. And so we thought, wow, that could lead to persistently high debt levels relative to house prices. And as you know, house prices occasionally do go down as well as up. Mm -hmm. uh, and we thought, wouldn't it be smart if we reminded the banks that it's really a good idea in terms of underwriting to have folks, you know, let them draw as they always do uh, if the banks are comfortable with that, but then anything that is above 65% after the draw, amortize it down like you would any other normal mortgage payment. How so, do you, yeah, sorry, didn't mean to cut you off. Oh yeah, I just, so if you have the 70% loan to value and you, you, you take a line of credit out for an additional 10%, uh, what will that mean after December, 2023? Uh, it means that you can still draw, it'll just, the payments will be amortizing and have a principal pay down component. It won't just be interest only. 
Okay, so I mean, you're, you're getting at the consumer there. I wonder if you can boil it down just, um, you know, in the most basic form of what this means for uh, the Canadian borrower. Um, means two things. For the individual borrower, means after they draw on their lines of credit, when they have loan to values on their homes north of 65%, mm -hmm. they'll have to pay down in an amortizing fashion the way they do their normal mortgages. It's mild change, not a modest change. For the broad system overall, for homeowners overall, it's a margin of safety uh, in the system that'll tend to improve credit quality. And if we have good credit quality, we have stable housing finance. And if we have stable housing finance, we have a relatively healthy housing system. Okay, speak, speaking of housing, the real estate market, something that's come up recently um, has been the, the mortgage stress tests uh, because, you know, last June, uh, the requirement was put in place that borrowers had to qualify um, at either that 5.2% 5.25% um, rate or two points above their contract rate, whichever is higher. Uh, mortgage rates have climbed so significantly um, recently. Um, is this mortgage stress test still, you know, the 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 best uh, form that it could be? Are you, are you thinking about any changes? Yeah. So first of all, Seb, you're right. We did. Uh, tighten the stress test a little bit a year ago, and I'm glad we did in light of what we saw with interest rates over the last uh, couple of months. I mm -hmm. mean, I think I think that was unexpected, but it was good we had that margin of safety to deal with that. And so you're right, as interest rates go up, the stress test, all else equal, becomes more onerous. Um, you know, I'm glad we have the stress test in today because the folks who are borrowing today are qualifying. Uh, at a rate two percent above, typically two percent above uh, uh, what they can, wh what their contract rate is. Uh, that means they're going to be in better shape if rates continue to go up from here. Um, uh, over time, uh, we're always looking at whether the stress test is fit for purpose, given our environment. Uh, we look at it at the end of every year in December. Uh, and we'll do that per the normal course this December. And if we if we think a more uh, rapid uh, uh, change is required, we can always do that. Uh, and we'll try and be as transparent with that as possible. But for right now, we're on schedule to review the mortgage stress test in December, uh, and we'll give it you know a, a clear-eyed look and, and make sure it just adds to the resilience of the Canadian housing system was there was there a you know a, a timeline on it when you put it in place like was it a was it a temporary um, idea that you know wasn't meant to be permanent no it's never never not meant to be permanent we put okay. it in place it's just sound underwriting if you're making a loan to someone at a yep. current interest rate there's a risk that could go up so yep. what we ask lenders to do is you know, test for that risk and make sure your your borrowers can handle that. What we said, yeah. though, is every year we'd review it to make sure it made sense for Canadians. I wonder, you know, uh, it's tough. I, I, I just, I wonder if some people, and I'm not sure if you would have the answer to this, but how concerned you, perhaps you might be that some people, you know, pass the test, but weren't actually expecting that their, perhaps their variable rate mortgage would be climbing as much as it has. You know, there's one thing to pass a test, but there's another thing to really budget for uh, those, you know, higher variable rates that they might be experiencing. Are you concerned there at all that, um, you know, that that could be an experience some Canadians are, are having? So um, fortunately with the variable rate, um, uh, we have that that floor. It was the higher of 5.25% or mm -hmm. the contract rate plus 2%. So variable rates up until very recently, the stress test just wasn't wasn't just 200 basis points, 200, two percentage points. And it was 300, three percentage points. So that that I'm glad we had that floor in place. And I think the folks who qualified for variable mortgages under that 525 stress test, uh, are, are by and large going to be resilient to what we've seen thus far. Uh, if you're asking, are you worried as rates continue to rise, will it put stress on Canadian households? Uh, yeah, we're, we're very worried about that. And we're constantly looking at uh, what we can do to add a bit more resilience into the system. Uh, at present, you know, before everyone gets uh, too concerned, 
Uh, mortgage delinquencies, as measured by the Canadian Bankers Association, are 0.15 percent. Another way of saying that is 99.85 percent of Canadians with mortgages are current on their mortgages. We're starting from a good place. We're starting from a good place because we've been very careful and prudent about putting in good guidelines like we did today. And we'll continue to do that with an eye towards sustaining housing credit through whatever econ economic cycle we're in. Okay, Peter.